Last time, we explored Roots of Unity and the Moivert's Theorem. This time, we're going to go solve geometry problems with complex numbers. Let's get started. So just to go over some key strategies. One, if you rotate a point by the origin, and let's say origin, which is not 0, 0, just 0, right? Basically, now what we're doing is we're assigning, just like how in coordinate geometry, we say this is 3, 4. Now we're just saying assign a complex number to this point. So 3 plus 4i. And if you're rotating this about the origin by an angle of theta, the equivalent to multiplying 3 plus 4i by cis of theta. It's that simple. Okay, so that's all you need to do to find that point. Okay, so now let's explore some examples. And this is the most brilliant example. When you see this, you're going to be like, wow, that's such a cool solution. Let's take a look. We got 0, 0, A11, B37. They form an equilateral triangle. What's AB? Oh, geometry. I mean, that's hard. I mean, you can solve this with geometry. You can write three equations. You can be like, okay, square root of B squared plus 37 squared equals the square root of b minus a squared plus 26 squared equals the square root of a squared plus 121. Two variable equation, two equations. You can solve that, but good luck with that. That's very hard. And that's going to take a lot of algebra, for like tedious algebra for sure. Here's the slick solution here. Let's put this all into the complex plane. This becomes zero. This becomes a plus 11i. And this becomes b plus 37i. So now, because this angle is 60, we can use rotation, complex number rotation. OK, so now let's just write the equation for rotation. We have a plus 11i times cis of 60, which is half plus root 3 over 2i equals b plus 37i. And now we just compare real parts and imaginary parts. The real part is half a minus 11 root 3 over 2. The imaginary part is 11 over 2 plus root 3 over 2a. And now guess what? Two variables, two equations, because we can compare the real parts and the imaginary parts. So what's our first equation going to be? 11 over 2 plus root 3 over 2a is 37. We subtract 11 over 2 from both sides. We get 63 over 2. So a is 21 root 3. So now let's solve for b. We just do 1 half 21 root 3 minus 11 root 3 by 2. That's just 5 root 3. So our product, well, it's pretty simple. It's just 105 times 3, 315. So yeah, we're done. That's literally it. That was such a cool solution, wasn't it? We multiplied by 60 degrees in the complex plane. And that gave us a brilliant solution. Just, a, just an absolutely brilliant problem. And now let's try one slightly harder example that uses the same fundamental idea. Okay, so f of z is z squared minus 19z. z, f, z, and f, f of z are vertices of a right triangle in the complex plane, the right angle at z. This is a mouthful. We've got a right triangle. z, f of z, f of f of z. They form a 90 degree angle here. Find z. Wow. How do we do this? So the key strategy here is. It's easy to deal with rotations about the origin. We multiply by cis of the angle. But fz, it's harder to deal about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale this whole figure f of z by f of z. We're going to subtract f of z to all the coordinates. This way, now we have the origin. And now rotations about the origin is very easy. Now we just have z minus f of z equals f of f of z minus f of z 
Okay, now this is pretty simple. Z minus Z squared plus 19Z. And then F of F of Z is just, okay, this is a little bit computationally heavy. Maybe. We'll see. Okay, you know what? I'm going to, in order to make this a little bit better, I'm just going to write this as F of Z minus Z. It's the same thing if you think about it. F of Z minus Z and F of Z minus F of F of Z. So what is this quantity, first of all? I forgot to explain that. Notice that this, the argument of this complex number, this is the, this, this is this, and that is this complex number here. These two points are rotated about zero. So what does that mean? That means if you look at their cis values, we have R cis A, and let's say we have S cis B, their cis values differ by, their angle, the A and the B, differ by 90 because it's rotated 90 degrees. So if you evaluate this reciprocal of the complex numbers, it should have an argument of, of 90 degrees. And by argument, I mean, you divide out those complex numbers from each other. Hmm. You know what? I, I, well, okay. They should have an argument that's 90 degrees, meaning that this, whatever this complex number is, because this has cis of A, and this is something cis of something cis of b. This something cis of a, this has to be 90 more than b, because it's rotated 90 degrees. So when you divide it, this has to be equal to something cis 90. This is just something like saying the emptiness. So let's find out what this is, and then we'll see when is it going to be something cis 90. Let's evaluate this. Go ahead, straight into it. And actually, yeah, let's, let's flip, you know what, let's flip these because it will be easier that way, I think. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't really changed anything, right? I'm just doing divide this by this, and then I just made them flip the signs on both of them just to make the computation easier. The F of Z is just, is just going to be this and the denominator, pretty simple. The denominator, numerator is a little, little bit more messy, but not that bad z squared minus 19z, and then this all squared minus 19. We don't make any space here. Okay, and now we just have to do a little bit of algebra, unfortunately, but that's okay. z to the fourth minus 38z cubed plus 361z squared, that's this, minus 19z squared plus 361 Z squared. So that's all the stuff in the middle. Now let's combine, combine, combine. Plus 722Z squared. And then you subtract 19Z squared. So 703Z squared. That is all of this stuff. And then now we're doing z squared minus 19z minus that, so we just make everything here minus, and then we add z squared minus 19z. Oh, this computation is a little bit, a little bit annoying. Okay, yeah. Let's continue here. So, so now we just have to add this, and then we have negative z to the fourth plus 38z cubed minus 702z squared minus 19z. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so now what do we do with this? You can try and expand it, but that's going to be really messy. Here's something to notice. You can factor z squared minus 19z out of the numerator. 
And in doing that, we get 1 minus, and then we get c squared minus 19z. And then minus 19, just 19. And that just becomes, that becomes what? 20, 20 minus c squared plus 19z. So that's 20, or let's write it as negative z squared plus 19z plus 20. And if you're a good observer, you can notice that this can easily be factored, the denominator as well, of course. And this term over here, we can factor out the negative. And now this is just z minus 20 times z plus 1. Pretty cool. This just cancels straight away. And we can cancel a z here as well. And now let's just simplify all of this. We get negative z minus 19 z plus 1. And we're given that this, remember from earlier, is something times cis of 90. But what does it mean if something is something times cis of 90? You start here, you multiply by cis of 90. If, if, the, if our value is a number, a real number times cis of 90, it's going to be fully imaginary. Because you start at the origin, let's draw the unit circle. You here, you multiply by cis of 90, you get here. And if it's some real number times that, it's always gonna lie on this line. No matter how big, you, how big or small you make this circle, this is the R value, it's always gonna have no real part. So this is just has to be purely imaginary. And now we kind of go back to our A plus BI trick. We're now, okay, let's make this A plus BI minus 19, and then a plus bi plus 1. Because now we can see that once we expand all of this out, we need only to have an imaginary part. And yeah, we can just ignore the negative. It doesn't really matter. We're just trying to say, okay, this thing has to be imaginary. What does that mean? Oh, and we're also given that the imaginary part of z is 11i. So we're already given a lot of information. We're given that the imaginary part of z is 11i, so this is just 11. And we're given that this whole thing is purely imaginary, so it has no real part. And now we just do some expansion. We get a plus 11i squared minus 18 times a plus 11i. And then we subtract 19 at the end. Okay, so what is the real part of this? The real part has to be zero. The real part is a squared minus 11 squared for this first term, and then minus 18a for the next term, and minus 19. This is all zero. a squared minus 18a minus 140 equals zero. So now all we have to do is solve for a. And to do this, we can use the quadratic formula. So yeah, we have to just, there's no other way besides using the quadratic formula here. Or you can, maybe, maybe you can even complete the square now. It can just be like a minus nine squared equals what, two, two, one. So a is what, nine plus root two, two, one. Nine plus root two, two, one, or nine minus root two, two, one, which is negative. Which one is it gonna be? Well, it says it's of this form. So plus root n, so it's going to be 9 plus 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 1, plus 11i. So our answer is just 9 plus 2, 2, 1, 2, 30. A brilliant problem. Key thing, notice that this, rotate, this right angle is just saying, we scale everything down to zero, you define this expression, it's, this value is going to be 90. Just a brilliant solution here. Now we're going to take a look at complex numbers and polynomials. But that's all in the next video. We're going to learn how to deal with complex roots of polynomials. Check it out there. Bye.